these are really hard discussions to have. And, uh, you know, we, we give out a lot of money in grants, and we don't do press conferences for every time we hand out grant money. Um, we're doing a press conference not to announce just the money, but to kind of highlight the problem. And it's, it's a real problem. Anti-Semitism, hate in general, the kind of crimes and events we see in our community don't have any place here. And, uh, you know, I have to reflect on this because I grew up in the 50s and 60s. And the uncomfortable thing is that I knew what this was when I was growing up. And then there was a brief period of time, it seems brief now, when all this seemed to subside and people didn't talk like this and didn't act like this. And now we're back in a world where people are perfectly free to hate. It's almost like we had a president who led the hate liberation front. Um, and it has really, I think, impacted our society in, a, in an incredibly negative way. Um, and we also all know, and I knew when I was a kid, that hate isn't spontaneously generated. And the people who are doing these things didn't wake up one morning and just say, I think I'll read a book about hate. And then I think I'll hate somebody. Um, they get these ideas from other people. They get these ideas from older people. These are passed down generation to generation. And some people escape it, and some people don't. And there's too much silence about institutions they preach hate, too much silence about the indifference of some institutions to this. And you can look around Montgomery County and see who stands up and who doesn't stand up when there are hate crimes. And it says something. This is not something where there should be anybody left sitting or not in the room when we're talking about trying to fight hate, racism, anti-Semitism, wherever the manifestation, you would think everybody would be in the room. And it's just honestly not true. And that's a problem. It would not have a place and it would not be able to fester here if people were less tolerant of its existence among us. So this allocation is important. It's $800,000 this year. It was funded last year. We've you know, given out the grantees. We're in the process of putting together a new budget. And obviously, the needs are greater than $800,000. And I would expect that there will be enhancements in this budget to help us further address the needs that exist in the community. We've had so many deeply disturbing incidents that it's hard not to act. And we are going to continue to act to do the things we need to do to make our community safer. It is really unfortunate that we're doing this. If you think about this money, and where I could have put it into feeding programs in Montgomery County or rental assistance in Montgomery County, if everybody were just acting civilized, so we could just deal with the social ills of poverty, and that would be nice if that's all we had to deal with. But instead, we divert resources to protect people from people who are just driven by hate. And it's a sad commentary on where this is, but it's something we have to fight. I hope, and I've said this before, people have got to stop being silent in the face of what people say. If a friend, a neighbor, an acquaintance, or just some crazy person walking around the grocery store says something that's not appropriate, people have got to have the courage to stand up and say, you shouldn't talk that way, and that's not acceptable. If people don't hear that, it just becomes part of the normal chatter. Just one more idea in the sea of ideas, and all ideas are equal. So who are we to say this is not legitimate? This is not legitimate. Hate is not legitimate. And we've got to get brave enough and confident enough when people stand up and do things like that, that we push back. And it's on all of us to push back. So I want to thank the council for supporting this. this I know this is not a hard decision. I know that if we put more money into this in the coming budget, this will not be a hard decision either. Uh, these are things we have to do. Uh, we don't have a choice at this point. This has gotten, you know, <laughs> way out of control. This is not the kind of community we want to be in. And we don't want people to think that we're going to sit back and just absorb it and go about our business. You can't go about your business. You can't walk into a grocery store and not have somebody punch you out because they see something they don't like. Um, that's a problem, and uh, we have to do more to stomp that out. This money will not get to the root cause of it. it. You know, we can build protection and we can build barriers around things. The only way this is going to stop is when we confront it in our communities, live and in person, and take on the people who are fostering this in our communities. You cannot hide from this. 
I can't build walls tall enough and strong enough to keep you from simply walking down the street and getting assaulted. We don't live in bubbles. So it's on us, I believe, to be much more aggressive in the outer world in terms of confronting people who spew this kind of nonsense and telling them there's no place in, not just Montgomery County, it doesn't have any place in America and it doesn't have any place in the world. So thank you all for coming out this morning. Um, and let's push back, really. Thank you.